Shavua to everybody. Nice to see everybody as we complete the part five of our five part series, what the prophets and the psalmists had to have their understanding of the Torah's exegetes. Um, and next week, Rabbi Liebtag will begin a two part series on uh, on Pesach, I think, beginning how Tehillim understands or re understands, you know, you know, Maggi, but that'll be next week. And Rabbi Liebtag, Vakasha, uh, Achran Achran Chavi, part five of five. Well, thank you. Up until now, the first three, the first three or four were Nevim. We we saw Nevim as exegetes, as um how they understood Chumash. We saw Yeshayel and we saw Yirmiyel and Zechariah. That's it. We saw two Sirim on Yeshayel, one on Zechariah for Purim and one on Yirmiyel for Parshat Tzav and Sefer Vayikra. Today, I want to go back to Sefer Breshit, but begin our study of Tehillim. To see Tehillim as a commentary on Sefer Breshit. And we're going to do something two weeks in a row. We're, both this week and next week will be Tidim Kufay, because it requires two weeks. But today will be it's Tidim Kufay as a commentary on Sefer Breshit. Next week, we'll see Tidim Kufay as the first Haggadah. So, um, because that has to do with the, uh, the pre Pesach program. Now, you can understand next week's share without this week's share, but you'll appreciate next week's share a lot more after having this week's share. So, we're not going to do the Haggadah side of it today. We're going to do the um, or Shanut side of it, how it understands Sefer Breshit. No. The stage source sheet is different. The stage source sheet for next week, I'll give you a source sheet that has everything from this week organized. But it's important this week, simply, I, I want to go through a study process because there's a danger in source sheets that right away, you know, you see the answers, everything. What I want to do today, I want the class to happen in your head. I'm going to share with you how to study a Perak and Now, we have a minute, we, call, we, we zog tehillim, or we say tehillim, or we read tehillim, and rarely do we ever understand it. Most will understand a pasach, or translate a pasach. But rarely do we study a parak, what's going on in the parak, unless you're in college and you have to do it for some kind of paper. Um, the, um, what I want to show you, though, certain prakim and tehillim are simply amazing compositions, and to understand the composition and the point, you have to study them as a, as a unit. So I'm going to give you a class today, how to study Tidim Kufay, how to study a long parak in Tidim. The overall approach is, I call it, what's the title? I'm sorry. What's the header? What's the structure? What's the topic? What's the point? I'll make it, I'll say it better. The first thing we have to do is identify what's the header, what's the opening point, or the opening header of the Mizmor. Sometimes it's one line, sometimes it's five lines, 10 lines. What's the structure of the Mizmor, which will be our main topic today. And finally, what's the point it's when I compare the header to the structure, what point, what point is the Mizmor trying to make other than tell you that God's great or something like that? So we're going to take Kudim Kufay, which should look very familiar to people. It better look familiar. If not, that means you don't go to Shul for Pesukit Zimra. But I'm assuming at least sometime in your life you saw these Prakim. Let me just check the chat before we start. Okay, here are the sources. Okay, again, the sources, are, I'd rather you have in a... In a and you'll see why there's no regular source sheet this week very soon. Okay. Here I took from, this is a formatted uh, sheet. This is Tidim Kufe and Tidim Kufav next to each other. Got it? We're going to reformat this later on. This I call a data dump. Data dump. This is Pasuk after Pasuk. It's just, I like doing it one line at a time because then you can see the line. We're not going to read it from here. Don't worry. I'll do an English Hebrew one. But this is Tidim Kufay and Kufav. When I show you, they're both very, very long. We're going to do focus on Kufay, but we need Kufav to understand Kufay later on. <coughs> but today, our goal is to understand Tidim Kufay, which is 45 Sukim. Super, super long. Agreed? I want to show you today, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I think, but you'll decide about the shadows of the doubt, that this parak is amazing commentary on Sefer Breshit, maybe even and Sefer Shmot. And, and there's no doubt I can understand that the author, this means more, the psalmist, had a very basic understanding of some key themes in Sefer Breshi. So now let's get to work. I want to find the header, and I'm going to now stop this share and read in a regular English Hebrew Tanakh to make it nice and easy to follow. So we're going to open up Tidim Kufay. If you have your own Tanakh at home, even better. Psalm 105, Hebrew English. Okay. Now, tell me, does this opening line look familiar? I'll make it nice and big. Okay. How come it looks so familiar? Rabbi Jay, you're teaching. Are you up to here yet? In, uh... 
No, we're almost at Rabbi Yishmael. We're in the middle of Eisim Makom. We're twenty six okay. weeks, and, and then you have to uh, kind of And we uh, we do Nusach Ashkena, so we got to do Mizmor Shir and Baruch Shamar first. <laughs> okay. So, um, so got that. But and then the next day, Shurlo Zamrlo. It's hard to say this slowly, isn't it? Because we're so used. Because you always come to Pesukim Zimmer late, but when I get start, and you start catching up. But everyone knows these Pesukim. Now, let's take a step back. And I'm going to ask you a question. The first line, okay, is that, and think for a minute, don't answer so fast. Is the first line a command or a statement? Look at it carefully. We'll take a quick quote. Just a couple of people, anyone who wants to answer, feel free to answer. Command or statement? Who is a command? Um, is, command. Is a command. command. A command. Okay. It, it's imperative that everyone understands that. If you got my joke, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's imperative to understand this is a command. Now, how about the next line? Shiru lo zamru lo, Same thing. Command. Now, from my life experience, whenever there's a command, there's someone giving the command and someone receiving the command. Correct. Now, who's giving the command? The psalmist. The psalmist. It's, this is not a derise, is it? Is there you all know Tariag Mitzvot? It's not one of the seven Noah laws, is it? Is there a Tariag Mitzvah law that we have to praise God and sing his praises? I don't think does anyone count it? Does the Bahag or the Smog or all that? No, right, Jay? I don't think anyone counts it. There are Shito that Halel on Yontif, I believe, is the right to that's a machloket. But uh, yeah. for another time, Mahalachik at Dita by Hanukkah, even there's a whole machloket there. The yeah, but, but this there. is yeah, is this say only on Hanukkah? Yeah, so I, I I'm not uh, holding there. I gotta I gotta look into it, but okay. I understand your point, of course. Uh, in general, no one sees this as a chiyuv diraisa. Okay. Correct. Because okay. if it was a chiyuv diraisa, then for sure we wouldn't. You no, know, it's, def it's definitely not. You know, it's not little. Uh, it's not a. It's not a little minag or something like that that we that we have to follow. Now, now, the flip side is who's commanding? But who's being commanded? So I want what I want you to do. I want you to read on on your own. This is real easy. See how many lines are command lines and see if you can identify who's being commanded. And just just raise your hand. I, 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 I want to look at the uh, I'll look at the things a little bit. If you have an answer, raise your hand. How many lines, how many lines are command lines? And in what line do we find out who's being commanded? I'll only give you one hint. It's like real easy. Everyone read, just take it, take 30 seconds to read. I'll drink a little coffee. I want you to identify who's being commanded. Pasuk Vav. Pasuk Vav. Right, everyone, it's so simple, right? Pasuk Vav, who's being commanded? Zera Avram Avdo B'nei Chol Now, is, is there a thing from Sefer Breshit there? Zera Avraham Avdo? Sure. That, that's, that's, remember, God promised the Zarcha Tedat Aretz. And the offspring of Avram Avinu. His servant, whose servant? God's servant, Abraham. And B'nei Yaakov Bechirav, the children of Yaakov who were chosen by God. Right? Avram being chosen for a purpose, and his offspring from his offspring being chosen, and the final chosen, chosen, chosen is going to the sons of Yaakov. Isn't that a mega theme in Sefer Breshid? And what, what are these opening lines saying? That the offspring of Avram Avinu, which is Am Yisrael, isn't it? What are we commanded to do? What are we commanded to do? We're commanded to, to praise God, recognize him, thank him, talk about how great he is, look for him, remember all the great things he does. Correct? All these things? Now, do we ever fulfill that? At the Seder, we do, don't we? Don't we sing God's praises at the Seder? But I according to the psalmist, the Jewish people are obligated to praise God. Now, did Avram ever do something like this? He was always going around, but the crow b'shem Hashem. That's right. So no, we're, I'm gonna, we're, we're going to do that in a minute. This idea of calling out in God's name is replete in the life of Avram Avinu, and we'll see also with Yitzchak. In fact, other than getting in trouble and, and being you know, sent around, if I'm asking us, what does Avram do when nothing else is going on? That's all he does. And we're going to go through the life of Avram and, 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 and highlight that. Got that? So I'm going to take a quick break. Also, I'm going to show you. It's my key point. 
that these opening six tzukim, right? It's commentary on Sefer Breshit, isn't it? Because what's it saying? If that's what Avram did, that's what we need to do. What, what Rambam would call Masevot Simon Abanim. Masevot Simon Abanim. I'll translate. Uh, how do you translate that? Masevot Simon Abanim. What happened to our forefathers is assigned to, the, to, the, to their children isn't predetermining Jewish history. It's foreshadowing history and giving us what our goal, it's explaining to us what our goal, what can be, and what should be. Or what sometimes what couldn't be, but what will happen if we follow? There's, there's we can be Avram Avinu's, or we can be, we can have situations like Yaakov. We can be in exile. We can be, you know, we can be in recovery. We can be in different modes. We can be in Avram Avinu mode. We can be in Yitzhak mode. We can be in Yaakov mode. But what mode we're going to be in depends on our our behavior. Now, so I want to show you how this idea of calling out in God's name is central in the life of Avram Avinu. And we'll just take a little tour of Tanakh real fast. Uh, where are we? We want to do a new share. And we're going to open up Sefer Breshit. If you want, you can follow with the regular Chumash. I'll, you guys prefer the English-Hebrew one. So we'll take a nice English-Hebrew Hebrew, English Chumash. And we'll keep Tilim open. And we'll open up a, a different Chumash. We'll go to Sefer Breshit. And by the way, was Avram the first one to call it in God's name? Wasn't uh, um, Kohen Elion Melchizedek? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll examine that in a minute. Oh, we need Sefer Breshit. That's what we're studying. At the end of chapter four, chapter four is the story of Kain and Hevel, right? Everyone would agree that chapter four is actually the story of Kain and Hevel or, or Kain killing Hevel and his punishment. But isn't it? You know, Adam, Yadat, Chaba, Ishto, two kids, and you know, everyone knows the story. Agreed? Now, look what happens. I want to show you what should be the last line of the story. When the story's over, um, go, Hevel has no descendants because he died before having children. Kain has like some six generations. Remember? And the last one, sure enough, is Lemech. Lemech has lots of kids, or three kids. Uh, not, not very original in their names. Yaval, Yuval, Tuval. And, um, and then what happens? Um, you know, Lemech kills somebody. The whole story which you're familiar with. Pasach HaFei should be the last line. Why? Ve'yeda Adam od et ishto. Look how the story began. I want you to appreciate Chumash. How the story began? Ve'adam yedat chava ishto. Got it? The first two kids. First two kids, a disaster. How does America end? Wouldn't that be the perfect last line of the parak? If the parak ended there, no one would say we're missing something. Perfect closure. What are we told next? Oh, Sheikh was born. He also had a child. Interesting name for this. Uh, his name was Mankind. Enosh, okay. Enosh is start for be, it's between Ish and Anashim. We use it nowadays in modern Hebrew for mankind, for humankind. Enosh. And then we're told, Azu Chal Hashem. What an enigmatic Pasuk, right? Azu Chal Hashem. What's that mean? Then man began to call on God's name. Is that something good? Someone? Or did man begin to mechalel, to, to defile God's name? Is Hucham Milashan beginning or defiling? Rashi will say debased. And, and here the English, it's he called, and man began to call. That's something good. All the classic Parsha name say something bad. Rashi says that's when Avodah Zorah began. The Rambam brings that in Hilchot Avodah Zorah. Because Huchal can mean Chilu. Whatever it is, it's a cliffhanger because clearly the cotton guy's name is something good, but something here went bad. Correct? But that's the first time we have, this is a setup. You follow? When you study Sefer Rashid, it's a book. A cliffhanger process like that at the end of a chapter, because then we go to genealogies. And the genealogies in the next parak, we go back again to Adam, Chava, I mean, Adam, uh, Sheit, Enosh. Right? I didn't need to mention Enosh because I'm going to mention in, in chapter four, I have him in chapter five. There's something as a cliffhanger in the end of chapter four that's setting the stage for a thing that's developing. Now, chapter five is all these genealogies. Remember, Azu Chalikro B'Shem Hashem. And guess what happens at the end of chapter five? Yep. 
Who's the last genealogy? We have Noah, has three sons. What are their names? Shem, Ham, and Yafet. Well, what does Shem have to do with that theme? Azu Chali Kro B'Shem Hashem. And one of Noah's sons is called Shem. Why is he called Shem? We find out later on at the end of the flood story, at the end of chapter nine, when Noah gets drunk and he's not so happy with what his kids did, and he curses you know, Ham in Canaan. But he doesn't exactly bless Shem. Shem, what does he say? He blesses God. What does he say? Boruch Hashem. If you wanted a little trivia game, the first one to say Boruch Hashem in Tanakh. It's Boruch Hashem Elohei Shem. What's that mean? We're blessing God, the God of Shem. Isn't he the God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov? Isn't he the God of everyone? What's it mean? Elohei Shem means the God that Shem talked about. We say in Rosh Hashanah davening, remember? Hashem, the God that Israel talks about. In my opinion, when we dive in Shemones and say, Abraham, Yaakov, we're not saying the God who took care of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, but rather the God who Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov talked about. You know, when he's your God, does that mean he's the God taking care of you? Does that mean he's the God that you're representing, that you're in the service of? So when... When, he's, when Noach says, Baruch Hashem, Elokei Shem, knows, how do people know about God? Someone has to talk about him. Like, how do people know about Elohim? Well, Maki Tzedek talks about him. Because if you don't have a coin talking about a God, no one will know about the God. Therefore, Noach wanted his son to be a rabbi, therefore he called him Shem. Because his job was to make a name for God, to the point that Chazal identified him with the first Rosh Yeshiva. Correct? Because otherwise, it's a really boring name. Shame doesn't mean just name, it means God's name. And he's naming his son after, after an, give, making a name or reputation for God. Uh, now, um, so he says, Baruch Hashem Elohei Shem, which means if someone talks about God, that again, Elohei Abraham is not only the God who took care of Avram, the God who Avram talked about. Now, how do Avram talk about God? Because what's Avram going to do? I'm sorry, the, um, the, then we have the 70 nations. They mess up big time what happens. Remember, they gather together. And instead of making a name for God, remember, what do they do? They build the city in Migdal, Rosh Hashem, Shem. They make a name for themselves. See the contrast, the theme of Shem and Breshit? And then finally, in chapter 12, God picks Avram Avinu. Let's follow what Avram does. Avram makes Aliyah because God told him to make Aliyah. He follows. Okay. So he makes Aliyah. He, lands, he arrives in the land of Israel. He comes to land, he first he goes to Shechem. He continues traveling. And the end of his first wave of travel, remember, he, got, he comes from Mesopotamia, arrives at first And Hashem says, Va'agad Yeah, take Misham Eharab, Mikerem on the Betel Be'eto Olo. Betel Be'am Ha'ayim Mikerem. Va'even Shem Izbeach L'Hashem, Va'ikra B'Shem Hashem. See in Pasachet, in the beginning of Lech Lecha? The highlight of his travel, he comes to Betel, Nice name for a city to make a name for God, Beit El. Later, Yaakov is going to want to build a temple to make a name for God. Remember, what's the temple called? The place for God's name and reputation to be known. And therefore, what does Avram do? He calls out in God's name. So it's a Machoget Parsha name, but Ramban beautifully explains he's not only praying to God, he's making a name for God. Talking, explaining this concept of God to other people. And from there, he continues his travel. But the highlight, the religious highlight of his, of his Aliyah is, is in Beit El, making a name for God. He continues traveling. There's a famine, like happens often in Israel, and he has to go down to Egypt. We know the story. What happened in Egypt stayed in Egypt. I'm sorry, what happened in Egypt? Um, we left Egypt, got it? In chapter 13, he returns from Egypt. I'm just following the story of Avram Avinu. Avram comes back from Egypt together with his wife and Lot, very wealthy. Where does he travel to? He returns to where? He returns from the south. He goes back to Beit El, to the place he built his tent in the beginning, between Beit El and I. El Mokom Amizbech Asher Asa Sham Brishona, Vaikra Sham Avram B'Shem Hashem. See the Sham play, play game? Sham Sham Shem. Mikdal Bava, he had the same thing. But what does Avram do again upon his return from Egypt? Again, he returns and calls out in God's name. But I'm pointing out, in the life of Avram Avinu, when nothing's going wrong, What's his default stage? He's making a name for God. Now, 
Then Lot leaves, remember? And Lot leaves, and then we have the War of the Four Kings and Five Kings, and then we have Ripen of Tarim, where God promises that it's going to take a long historical process to become your nation, then the birth of Ishmael when he's unchosen, Rip Mila, everything. All, then we have all the trials and tribulations of Avram Avinu, all the stories. But the highlight, before the Akedah, which is the last story, which is a big test, in chapter 21, which I think is something positive, even though some Parshim say something negative, depends on your political orientation. Um, we read this on Rosh Hashanah, I think for a good reason. What do we read here? Um, at that time when Avram is living, this, we finally get Avram in his day-to-day -day life for the first time, besides all the stories of the wars and the story of Stillman and everything. And, and what happens? Avram is making a name for himself. And Abimelech comes and fichol, like Abimelech thinks his father's a king, he's a king, he's, a, he's the leader of a big group of people in the land of Israel. He's got an army, fichol's in charge of the army. They come to Avram and say, Elohim God's with you. And now swear to me that what he called, we want to make a treaty. And Avram says, okay, we're in on this. And Avram is able to give him guidance and tochacha and warning about, uh, about theft and things like that. And they make uh, they make excuses or they make they make basically they make peace. Okay, what does Avram do? Avram makes takes stone of a car and gives Avimelech, and they make a brit. Okay, and Avram pick, makes uh, takes seven lambs. I think that's why we take seven lambs on all the holidays to remember the story. Remember, always the Korban Musaf is always seven lambs. And what's the meaning of these lambs? He says it's a it's a symbol of our brit between God, the, Avram and Avimelech. Avram being a role model for Avimelech to learn from. Okay. So they make a brit in Beersheba. Abimelech goes back to his land. And what's Avram doing in Beersheba? Beersheba. What does Avram do? He calls out in God's name. That for sure, making a name for God. That's the highlight of his career. I hope my point's clear. Avram does that for a living. Then we have the Akedah, and then Yitzchak, and then everything moves now to Yitzchak and Parsha Todot. So Yitzchak has some trouble, doesn't he? With uh, Essek and Sit. Now remember in Parachavav. Parachavav and Brashit. Yitzchak has his troubles. You can't make a name for God when people hate you, as we well know. Avram is able to do it because he's respected, especially after everyone looks up to him. You can't make a name for God if people don't respect you. When Avram is respected, when Yitzchak's not respected, he can't do anything. So we have Essek and Sit. Now he finally gets to Rechovot. Remember the story? And they have peace. Okay. Um, we have um, here. Yeah. And then now that we have peace, what does he do? He's established himself. He gets along with his neighbors. Gets that can now follow in the footsteps of his father. What did Avram do in Beersheba? He made a name for God. God appeared to Yitzchak in Beersheba and says, I'm the God of Abraham. Don't worry, I'll be with you. I'll bless you. You're chosen. What does Yitzchak do now in return that he's chosen for sure and he's making a name for God? And then we have another bear, bear, and things go good. But what's Yitzchak doing for a living when things settle down? Making a name for God. Got it? What would Yaakov love to do? He'd like to be just like his uh, forefathers, wouldn't he? But why can't he? Because he's a fugitive, remember? When he, when he gets to Betel, it makes a netter. He says, right now, I'm a fugitive. I can't make a name for God. But when I come back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outdo my parents and grandfather, and grandfather. I'm going to make a house for God. That's Yaku's famous netter. Why he doesn't do it? Because when he comes back, he has family problems, which is a topic in Sefer Breshit. I hope my point is clear. Calling out in God's name is a mega theme in Sefer Breshit. What is the Tilim saying? It's our obligation. Why? Because we're Zerah Abraham Abdo Yachbene Kobachira. That's the share in itself. I hope, I hope that's, I want to make sure it's crystal clear. That's my point. Sefer Tilim is commentary on Sefer Breshit. And that's sure I've given many times about the theme of Shem Hashem and calling out in God's name. I want to prove that that thematic read is, is how Tilim read Sefer Breshit. Because most people, when they read Sefer Breshit, they don't pay attention to those details of making a name for God. We talk about it when, in Kaddish every day. Remember, Yeheshmer Rabbah? God's name is all through davening. It's one of the biggest themes in davening. But I'm saying it's not a theme only in davening, it's a theme in Chumash. And I can prove from Tilim that this, the Mizmor and Tilim understood calling out in God's name is a mega theme developing in Sefer Breshit. 
and one of the underlying reasons for the purpose of our chosenness, we make a name for God. We make a name for God by how we talk and by how we act. Okay. So that's point number one. And now we can continue. Um, let me check the chat real fast. If I miss something. Okay, a command and shut them. Very good. That is a good example. Okay, let's continue now with our Ms. Moore. Let's go back now and do the boring part. Um, not boring part, that's not nice. The uh, English Hebrew to not get rid of the chat and too many screens opening up here. Psalm 105, here we are. Okay, so again, who's commanded to call in God's name? Who is this God we have to praise? Who Hashem Elokeinu? He's our God, the God who chose us to serve him. Remember? Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Avo Bukhars, Mishpatav, his laws are everywhere. He's the God of all. Remember, Hashem Elokeinu, he's the one and only God. He's got, his laws apply to everybody, but he's our boss and we're chosen to serve him. Okay. Let's look at Pasachet now. I, 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 basically, I have a header, don't I? It's our job as God's people, as the offspring of Avram, to make a name for God. How do we do it? By how we talk, and hopefully by how we act. What's Pasachet? A command or a statement? Someone answer? Commander statement? Statement. Statement. Okay. okay. And who, who can translate that? Don't look at English for a minute. Let me, let me do something. I'll do a trick here. I want to move it over so you don't see the English. Can't do that, can I? No, I can't hide the English in this one. Don't look at English. How would you translate Zachar lo lambrito? He remembers. Right. Zachar lo lambrito. Translate the it's whole. It's a command. No, no. It's God, a command. God remembers his breed. It's in past. It would be, it's a simple past. In, um, in. Um, Zachar's past tense, isn't it? In Kal. Yeah. What's wrong with Pasachet? Tell me what's wrong in grammar with Pasachet. That's Tigbolda. That's parallelism. Let's take the first phrase. What's, what's complicated? What's wrong with the it grammar? It can't be in the sentence? past if it's Le'olam. Le'olam can't be past tense. Unless, Unless you're God. Time. Maybe Einstein can pull this one off. Or God. Unless you're thinking of it, he used to. And it's over now. We don't, that, we don't want to think that. That's not, the Olam means God remembered his covenant forever. Isn't, isn't that a problem? Yes. Every English translation has to deal with this. Let's see what we do. He has remembered his covenant forever. I don't know. I think that maybe um, it's a matter of it happens in the past, but he still remembers. The fact that that, that um it's not over. He remembered, and the memory lasts forever. Hmm. Then it should be Hove. Okay. Well, then it should be Zohar. But well, can I can I say something? Yes, a, a Brit is a, a agreement between two sides. Mm -hmm. So God is one side, and Israel is the other side. So exactly as He wants us to remember, He has to remember. Okay. It's a Brit. So yeah. So who's remembering here? Guys. Is God remembering or are we remembering? So, so here it's written that he, uh, that he remembers also. Yeah, but he remembered. It's past tense. <laughs> and the breed was in the he past. He remembered his covenant forever. Yes. I'm not going to answer the question. I'll keep the question in mind because it's key to understand the parent. But wait, we, wait. Frank uh, statement. He remembered past tense. <laughs> his covenant forever. The well, problem is. Yeah, go maybe ahead, Jennifer. Um, but how would you have said that correctly? He remembered and have the olam correspond to the perfect. I would say or he lo lam I would say he remembers his covenant forever. Well, maybe oh, I see. Ah! Sorry. Zachar is past tense. But maybe the somewhere olam is forever. Else, but maybe we're only stating that somewhere else God stated in the past that he would remember his covenant forever. <laughs> Maybe there's we, another place in Tehillim where God stated, I will remember my covenant forever. Or in Chumash. So in Chumash also. But, so but I'm, Chumash saying, I'm, I'm saying there's something problematic about the way the sentence is being written. If it says Zohar Lolam, it would make a lot of sense. If it says Zachar Brito, fine. Just, I, I'd rather keep it now as a question. 
Now, okay. what breed is it talking about? Give me some, give me some, what breed could this possibly be talking about? How many breed talk are there? Well, from, uh, Abraham. No, a breed from Abraham. Breed Mila. Breed make with Avram Avinu? Breed Mila. There's Breed Mila and Breed Ben Abtarim, correct? Yeah. And there's also Breed Keshari made with Noah. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, which Breed is this talking about? Well, read the next several Psukim and you tell me. There's some nice hints here what Breed is talking about. What Breed does God remember forever? Breed Ben Abtarim. Asher Kwartet Abraham. Which one are these The Aretz, the children, the Zera, the Aretz. No, that's, with Yaku. With Yaku. That's Breed Spain have a Tarim. Is that okay, let's, let's see if it fits, okay? Look at it. Asher Kratet Abraham, which one are these Chak, Bebdel Akub Lachok, the Serbit Olam, the Mordechat Teners, Erz Kanan Chebanat Batem, and God made it when we were a small one number and strangers in the land. No, now, why would this be Breed Ben of Tarim? Let's take that's a look. Great, but this is, is probably the Kratet Abraham. He, wait, wait, he one at a time. Um, explain, what do you mean by Birkat Avraham? He gave Avraham a bracha, then transferred it to Yitzchak, and then transferred it to Yaakov. That, that, that's that a is blessing. This is a brit. I'm looking for yeah. a brit. So that's only brit milat that was really done from generation to generation. And and, and how, about, how about brit ben abtarim? So we're, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to check both of them out, okay? Let's take okay. a look at Breed Ben of Tarim. And You've see how many taught us that Breed Mila is an Ot. You've taught breed. us that Breed Mila is an Ot. It's an Ot. To what Breed? To Breed Ben of Tarim. No, Breed Mila is, uh, is, that, is, Mila is an Ot. To the pass breed on Mila. the Breed Ben of Tarim. But breed, breed, it's a different Breed. Listen, in Breed Ben of Tarim, what does God promise? First, look at this last line. By Yomahu, Karat Hashem et Abraham brit lemor. That's wool. That's the smoking gun, isn't it? Asher Karat et Abraham. There. Okay. Nitina ta'aretz. What does God say? The zachar natate ta'aretz azo. From the Hamishnah to the Prat. And the land of the seven nations, including Kaman. Okay, that's two already. Okay. What else to say? Ushvoto um, li'itzchak. Now, what did God say? Remember, God said, I'm going to take you out. And, um, and what did God say? God told Avram, I'm going to take you out of, I took you out of Orkazim to give you this land to inherit, to conquer the Rishta. Avram wants to know how, and we have the whole breed. Now, the Shvuati Yitzchak, for those who don't remember, is a Shvuah and Brit Ben Abtarim. What's the proof? Um, where are we? How did I get lost? Oh, let's open up my Chumash again. Sefer Breshit. Now we need chapter 22, correct? Chapter 22, oh my gosh, I'm all mixed up here. Okay, Hebrew, English, Sefer Breshit. Chapter 22. Look at verse 15, 16 at the end. We're binishvati nyum Hashem. Ken asher sita te devar Let's find it. Da -da -dum. Okay, what's Avram say? Um, Malach comes to him again, Pasek Tetzayim. Remember, binishvati nyum Hashem. That's the Shavuot al Yitzchak, isn't it? Because Yitzchak is at the Akedah. Okay. That's universal there. That's Breed Tarim, isn't it? No. That's Breed Ben of Tarim, You with me? That's, that's for sure Breed Ben of Tarim as well. Okay. Ah, this is important. Why? Brit Ben of Tarim is never called a Brit Olam, is it? The word Olam we don't find ever in Brit Ben of Tarim. Where do we find it? Take a wild guess. Brit Mila. Brit Mila. Brit Mila is a Brit. How do we know Brit Mila is a Brit Olam? Well, just read it. It says so. In chapter yeah. 17. Remember, Brit Mila is not about circumcision. Brit Mila is about, first of all, Hitalech Lefanavia Tamim, how we have to act. Okay. God will make a breed, etc. And then we have the name change. But the breed, in case you forgot, is the breed olam of breed milah is he's our God, we're his people. Correct? Why did God take us out of Egypt? The purpose of breed ben was to get to breed milah. 
He's our God, we're his people. Attempt to the Lamb and remember the fourth cup. This this phrase, the Brit, the Brit Milah is I'm your God, you're my people. Eternal and it's an eternal Brit, it's the Brit Olam. And to fulfill that as a vehicle, God's going to give us what he calls it. Er, er, okay. And then and what what would be the old Brit, the reminder of the Brit? Is what? A circumcision. Because what will make it what what enables this breed to be what enables this breed to be eternal? Having children is the key for eternity, isn't it? Because if God makes a breed with Avram, in order to be eternal, Avram has to have children. And therefore, the reminder that you have to have children to be Jewish, keep children going, is breed. No, it's a good place to put a reminder. Hope you can figure that out. Okay. And then we have Umratem by a breed of Lam, and what's it then? Um, here. And now this begins the beautiful connection between Brit Milan and Brit Ben Aptarim. Who can tell me where that comes up in, in the Pesach story? This connection between Brit Milan and Brit Ben Aptarim? You have to have a Brit Milan to eat the Korban Pesach. Unheard of. And no, other law, no other law has that, right? That's Zot Kukat Pesach, the end of chapter 12. On the way to fulfill Brit Ben Aptarim, Moshe Rabbeinu is leaving Midian on this well of Rebit Ben Abtarim, that was the burning bush. And what does he encounter at the hotel? Chatan Damim, that whole... That's uh... a Brit Milah story, right? Before Moshe can fulfill Brit Ben Abtarim, he has to do Brit Milah. They're the only the... two bits that say the Archive Karev, if you don't fulfill the... them. Because the... not fulfilling them, the consequences you're cut off because they're both covenantal. So what it... this means more is doing... What makes Brit Ben Abtarim and Brit Olam is the fact that it's connected to Brit Milah. Brit Milah for sure is a Brit Olam. It's just like Brit Keshet is a Brit Olam. It's just like Brit Sinai will be a Brit Olam. Remember Shabbat? Benu Ben Otila Olam, Kishesh Shimim Sashman. That's for Shomru. So, but why would someone think, listen carefully, you tell me, why would somebody think the Brit Ben Abtarim is a one time Brit? Please. Why would you think repent is a one-time get out of Egypt card? Because it was between Abraham and Hashem, between Hashem and Abraham by itself. No, say better. I want a reason why it's a one-time breed. Because it has a number of years attached to it. It's so right. it sounds it's a, like it's a one-time get out of Egypt card, isn't it? He didn't say you're going to be enslaved forever. He says, I'm going to take you out once. I'm going to put you in, I'm going to take you out. And after within 400 years, I'll take you out. That's his promise. Once God takes us out of Egypt, Brit Ben Abtarim is over. Now, we're still his people. Will God continue to protect us? Remember Onochim Agenlach? Remember Brit Ben Abtarim? Will God continue to watch our history? At your Seder, we drink to this, don't we? We thank God for filling Brit Ben Abtarim. Let me take, I should show you a quick look in case you forgot. We're talking about something fundamental here, aren't we? I got a little muggy here just for the fun of it. Remember? Yeah. We thank God for keeping his promise of Brit Ben Abtarim. You know this by heart, right? And the next paragraph, we lift up our cups and we make a toast. That promise of Brit Ben Abtarim, because now we're once in history, we're in trouble. It can happen in every generation and God's oracle can save us. In fact, our first bracha of Shmonesri, before we ask God for another redemption, we remind God that he's Magen Abraham, which is Brit Ben mm -hmm. These ideas are, are central to davening. Okay? So now we're making progress in our in our Mizmor. I'm just trying to show you over and over again how Tilim is going to be... Do you understand this commentary on Sefer Breshit? That the Jewish people are commanded to make a name for God because that's what Avram did. That Brit Ben of Tarim is also Lo'olam. Do you understand why by Zachar, Zachar Brito makes sense for Brit Ben of Tarim because it's a one-time thing. Lo'olam it's already alluding to Brit Milah. But if God, if, if, if Hashem Hu Elohim, remember Brit Ben Tarim is Yud Kevavke, Brit Milah Hashem Elohim, if it's the same God then, and the same forefathers, that makes Brit Ben Tarim a Brit Olam, as we mentioned in our Seder. Now, so let's go back now and continue um, continue our, our, our study of the Perak, and we're going to, oh my gosh, we're going to run out of time soon. Okay, that's a good thing we have next week for this also. Let's go back and continue. I'll get, actually, I'll end up for some homework. Where are we up to? We're up to 
we need our page on Tehillim. Here we are. So we made this statement that God remembered his breach forever. The one he made with, I'm sorry, but smaller, smaller, smaller. There we go. The one he made with Aram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, clearly Brit Ben of Darim with the overview, with the overlap of Brit Milah to give us Eretz Canaan. Heaven, the land that God set aside for us. And God made this Brit when we were small in number. Okay. What is Pasuk Yid Gimel talking about? Take, let's take a quick read. They went from nation to nation, from kingdom to kingdom. God didn't let anyone harm them, oppress them. He yelled at kings about them and said, don't touch my anointed ones and don't mess with my prophets. You say this every day, don't we? We mumble it every day. What are we talking about here? The wanderings through the Midbar. Who, who went from nation to nation and kingdom to kingdom and God protected them? Abraham. That the Jews going from the Lower East Side to Brooklyn and from Brooklyn to Teaneck and from Teaneck to Chicago and from Brooklyn to the Five Towns and from Five Towns to Israel. Is that, or, or from Europe, from North Africa to Spain, from Spain to France, from France to, to Germany, from Germany to Poland. Is that what it's talking about or not? It's a bit unclear, but we have to see. Well, the problem is in davening, we stop here. But it means more continues going, doesn't it? What does it say? Let's take a quick read. What, we'll, we'll return to these Sukim in a minute. Okay, look at Tedzayin de Chabet and tell me what is this describing? Just read it on your own real fast. There's a famine in the land, no food to eat. God sent a man to them. Yosef. Yosef. Slavery. He was put into, into, into jail until his time came. And the king took him out of jail and made him a big shot. There's a whole Yosef. musical about this. Yosef. Yosef. Yosef and the going down to Mitzrayim. No. Okay. And then what happened? And Israel comes down to Egypt. Israel meaning who? Yaakov. Yaakov Yisrael, right? Yaakov God yeah. Eretz Ham. Not in a hot land, but the land of Ham, that's Egypt. Ham's son was Mitzrayim. One of his sons was Mitzrayim, right? And then Vayafer at the moment old, then we became, we became fruitful and multiplied. And then the Egyptians oh, yeah. started to hate us and they put us into slavery. What story are we telling? It's Mitzrayim. We're telling the story of the Exodus. You'll see why next week we're going to say this is a Haggadah. Now, if, if this is a story of going down to Egypt, and this is Yosef, then by default, what is your demo to Tedvav talking about? Avram. Not just Av Avram, it's and Yaakov. Because in their lifetime, they got in big messes, didn't they? Yaakov, Avram got, a, got in a big mess with Pharaoh, didn't he? Who saved him? God. Yitzhak got into a mess with Avimelech. Who saved him? Yaakov got into a mess with Lavan. Who saved him? God. Why did God save them? Because of Ben of Tari. You know what Shabbat means? Praise? What are we doing? Listen, we make a statement. Listen to the statement. The statement we're making is what? Zachalolambito. God remembered his covenant forever. Which one? The one he made with our forefathers. We make a statement and then we prove it. Now, read on your own now. I'll make it smaller. Actually, before we read on. You see, we have a history lesson here. We begin, we begin thing. What is Moshe sends? Moshe, God sends Moshe Abdo, Barom Bacharbo, and we start doing um, plagues to, to Egypt. Okay. If we're going to begin thanking God for filling Brit Ben Abtarim, okay, let's make, take off this screen share so I can see you guys for a minute. Right. We made a statement that God remembered his covenant forever. Correct? He remembers his covenant forever. Remember, actually, you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. Now, after making the statement, I'm going to prove it. How do I prove it? By telling the story of the Exodus. How God watched our forefathers. How Yosef became a big shot. How we became, went down to Egypt. How we became multiple in numbers, multiplied in numbers. How the Shibud began. And how God took us out of Egypt. Now, I'm sure you never read far. I'm, maybe you did. But don't read ahead yet. Where do you expect the story to end? If we're going to thank God for fulfilling Brit Ben of Tarim, where's the story going to end? Kibusha Aretz. Aretz Israel. That's sure. the Zionist answer. Yeah. Give me a firm answer. After the Yetzirah and Mitzrayim. And give me a secular answer. With, oh, with it's Yetzirah. Yeah. Did we the do Exodus. the three Kippot Seder? Does the Seder end with freedom? Does it end with Harsinai? Does it end with the land of Israel? If we're in a Kibasur God, it's all about the land of Israel. 
Keep Ashkelon, it's about getting the Torah. And if no kippah, it's about freedom and their own important values. But this is the story of the Exodus. So if you have a Tanakh open, open up. I'm going to share the big, the big page also. I want you to scan through and see where the story ends, okay? This would be a lot of fun, I think. I'll share my screen and here, we'll read it together. If, I'd rather you peek ahead a little bit. I want you to peek ahead and see where the story ends. You know, you, we have some nice, I'm going to make it smaller, the page. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Uh, what happens here? My screen share is not working so good. Smaller, smaller, here we go. Smaller, smaller, smaller. I need to use a uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> yeah. We have we have not all the makot, with some makot, which ones we're skipping enough for now. Um, here's makat b'chorov, okay? Makat b'chorov is pasak lamed vav. And the icing on the cake that this is brit ben of tarim is the kesef zahav, isn't it? See the rechush gadol and lamed zayim? Okay, but now read from here. We have the makot and we have... Thing. Where does the story end? Look carefully. And, and raise your hand if you have an answer, or, or write a chat if you have an answer. Where does the story end? That in Eretz Yisrael. It's fin- it ends in Eretz Yisrael. Okay, someone's wearing a kippah through guy like me. <laughs> that, that, that we honor the statues, the mitzvot, observe his oh, laws, wherever That's the kippah shkora. No, but yeah. It ends in the midbar. It ends in the midbar. Yaksifu. Okay, okay. Now, now you're ready to appreciate Tilim. Look what happens. I'll, I'll do this with you for those who didn't catch on. Okay. We have the whole story. We make a statement. God for Sobri Ben of Tarim. Tell the history, don't we? The whole thing. What happens? God takes out with Kesav Azal. Egypt's happy. Isn't it? What's that doing? What's that doing? That's right. Why did God do that? Because God fulfilled Ki Zachar. Who remembers what Zachar means? To What's remember. this matching? Remember how we began Zachar Lo Lam Brito? That lines up with the Zachar Brito at the beginning. That's right. So what element of Brit Ben of Tarim is a one-time thing? Getting out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. But what remains eternal? The purpose of coming out of Egypt, which is, which is to do what? And it's Israel. And what's the purpose of the land of Israel? To do what? To keep the mitzvot. To keep the mitzvot. That's kippah shkora and kippah shkora. Got it? (laughs) The purpose of of freedom from slavery is to become a nation. God's keeping... The the purpose of Brit Ben of Tarim is to fulfill Brit Milah, which is Brit Sinai, to be God's people. But for that reason, I need the land of Israel. Now, by Tenlam, Arzot Goyim, Bamalum, Yerushu, that's Brit Ben of Tarim, Amalum, Yerusha. Got it? It's also the land of Canaan and Brit Milah, both promised the land. But what's the purpose? Bavori Shmuruch Kav, in order to keep his laws. Now, next week, this is the Haggadah, isn't it? Why? What Pasik and Shmot is this? What are we supposed to tell our children? Remember the Machloket? Do we explain to our children why God took us out of Egypt or why they're meeting Matzah? Remember? Remember Rashi? We explained to our children God took us out of Egypt in order to keep the mitzvot. Hmm. It's what we say in Avadim Ma'inu. In Sefer, we'll do this all next week. This explains our Haggadah. Hmm. It's a perfect Haggadah, we'll see. Hmm. You with me? Hmm. It's a masterpiece, Kufe. Hmm. It's a beauty. Now, in what way is Brit Ben of Tarim a one-time covenant getting out of Egypt? In what way is an eternal covenant? The land of Israel and keeping the Torah. Hmm. That's eternal. Because of his connection to Brit Milah. So that opening apparently mistaken grammars is fundamental. Zachar the Olam. Almost Zachar Kama the Olam. Because there's something one time about Brit Ben or at least hopefully, but there's something eternal about it. Mm-hmm. That's why the, our statement of Behisham Dalla Batena Vulanu is built on this parak. Mm-hmm. So this parak is not only commentary on Sefer Brishi, it's a Kiddush that what? 
The Brit Ben of Tarim is what? It's eternal. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's a Brit Olam. So for God will continue to offer this thing. Now, but that was only the topic from Perachet. What was the topic from, from, from the beginning? I'm going to share another source sheet with you now. And you, you won't like me for this, but I had to do it this way. Here's the whole parak. I sent it in the source sheets. Here's the whole parak formatted. Where are we? We want this one. Where's all the formatted stuff? But you can't give this to someone in the beginning because it's not fair. Here we are. Oh, where is it? Do you want to find here we are? Look at this one. I'll make it nice and small. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Here's all Tilim Kufe, but nice and formatted. Put this to the side there a little bit. You see it? Here's the header. Here begins a new section. Zachar Lodom Brito. Ending over here, Belvoir. You can print it out and, look and study it later on for homework. Now, I'll do a little uh, magic trick here. We need our little... Do you realize how, what a masterpiece this means more is? As far as composition? Remember, this is the header. It's Amiso's obligation to praise God. Correct? It's our obligation to praise God. That's point number one. Point number two is that God remembered his covenant. And we make this statement and we prove it. Now, it begins with Why did God do all these things? Okay. But who did he save out? Avram Avdo. Got it? And Bnei Bechirav. Bring that Bechirav. Do you see that? What's the means we're doing? It's tying together two themes of Seber Breshit. What are they? Avram calling out in God's name is one mega theme. Brit Ben is another mega theme, aren't they? There are two central themes in Seber. There's more, but there's two central themes in Seber Breshit. What are they? There's calling out in God's name. And God promising a one-sided covenant, I'm going to watch your history. You know what this means more is telling you? Indeed, Brit Ben of is eternal. That's a big Kiddush. But it's not one-sided. It's two-sided. Because at first glance, Brit Ben of is one-sided. Who's doing everything? God. We simply have to suffer through it. God's going to put us in Egypt. God will take us out of Egypt. God will redeem us, etc. According to this means more, what do we need to do? If we want God to fulfill Brit Ben of Turin, what do we need to do? Call out B'Shem Hashem. Exactly. Because that's why we're chosen. You see what the Mizmor is doing to Sefer Breshit? It's beautifully tying together two mega themes which become our sitter. Because don't we turn to God to fulfill Brit Ben of Tarim in Magen Abraham? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then in Davni, we're going to ask for Shema Kolein, we're going to ask for Gula, Kapa Shabar Galuch Herutenu, Et Semach David, Rushayim Mercha. But what do we supposed to understand? That in order to be worthy of God fulfilling people in Abtarim, God says he can, but will he? That's up to God. He didn't say when it will happen. The first one was 400 years. The next one is up to us. But if we want to give God a reason to fulfill people in Abtarim, what do we have to show God? That we want redemption and we know he can't help us. So we have to turn to God for re- in prayer for redemption. And when he redeems us, what do we need to do? We need to thank him for it. And if God sees we're, gonna, we're ready to thank him for redemption, that's the reason for him to bring redemption. According to some people, that's why we say hello in Yom Atzmaut. If, if you don't recognize that God's involved in your history, what's the point? Yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. Oh, but let me ask you this. What, but where does the, not only asking for redemption, but the... The honoring of his um, laws, his laws, his laws, the mitzvot. Where do we say that in davening, or where do we say it here? Oh, the idea that 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 is the 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 you have the you have the one breed and the other breed, um, and the second breed, the forever breed, the olam is. Is it simply calling out his name and no, asking for redemption his his with the laws? laws? But it's not, enough, it's not enough just to keep his laws. When we have to keep his laws because that makes, us, that makes God's name great by keeping laws, but we have to talk about God. Okay, so bo- both yeah. are... Yeah, I'll give you an example. Look in Kufav, which we can only start now. 
Mm -hmm. Set the stage for next week. In Kufab, what do we have? In Kufab, we have something. Oh, I I'm get rid of my clear the screen and move back to my mouse. The next parak, which is another theme in Brashid, which of course we have to get to every share. Right? We have another chiyuv to praise God. Hallelujah. Right? That's a command to praise God and it's a good idea. But then we ask the question, Who's worthy of praising God? Who's worthy of making notes? We're obligated to sing his praises, but who's worthy of doing that? Only who? To be worthy of, you have to do another theme in Breshit. Tizim Kufa is simply a masterpiece of Parshun and Sefer Breshit. Oh, like, that's not a theory. That's Mamash, it's Prat in the parak. And so I'm trying to show you, if I'm looking for a thematic understanding of Sefer Brashit, I can support it in Tidim Kufe. And, and it's so important that we, we quote this in our sitter. Not exactly this one, we quote a better one, a different, four, different version. That'll be, we'll do that next week's share of what we, do it, what we do in our sitter. And therefore, before we ask for redemption every day, what's the first thing we do? We praise God. <laughs> therefore, we have Psuke de Zimra before it's fila. Understand? And how do we begin Psuke de Zimra? With the Mizmor that tells us it's our obligation to praise God. Because how do we fulfill Mizmor Kufe? Every day in Psuket Zimra. The problem is we don't read Tidim Kufe. We read something from Divrei Amin. That's next week's share. Okay, got it? So let me just summarize. Again, that we did a lot here. But you have to review this. Do you understand why there's no source sheet today? I, I, I'll give you a different source sheet with everything we just quoted. So easy. I wanted to go through the parak and learn it. And not just give you the conclusion. I wanted to go through the process of studying the parak. The parak has a header, has a structure, has a point. Right? And the structure is it's, it's, when you put them together, it's taking mega themes from Sefer Breshit. Of the idea of calling out in God's name, the idea of covenant and the internal covenant, the eternal nature of the covenant, the purpose of the covenant, and showing that indeed God can redeem us and continues to watch our history. But as God watches our history, what do we need to do? We need to see his hand in history. And talk accordingly and act accordingly. Right? And, there, and it's all intertwined. It's not that God, it's not a one way covenant. God just, when everyone in trouble, just call out to him. Yeah. Our covenant is eternal in the sense that God can, can always redeem us, but we have to be worthy of redemption. That understanding is the key to our national behavior. And that makes prayer transformative. It's not enough just to pray to God for redemption. We have to make ourselves worthy of redemption, which was the same thing we saw in Ishayel and Yermiel and Zachariah, right? I think all these themes that all the Nivim talk about and Tidim talks about, they're all rooted in Sefer Breshit. That's all. But when you read Sefer Breshit, you don't notice it when you don't study it as a book. And that's the goal of this series. I'm trying to show you how, how what I'm trying to do in Sefer Breshit is what all the Nivim did. You see, and, and when you study the book thematically, you see all those things. Okay, we'll stop here and I'll take questions real fast. And uh, where are we? Um, any questions? What are we up to? No questions. Oh, chat real fast. Um, questions, questions. Okay, thank you. And wait, what's this? Ending with verse. Oh my gosh, I missed a lot of them. Um, what do we do here? Oh, short sheets. But I'm gonna make this bigger real fast. Um, English have to remember. Okay, Shiratayam. Okay, it's done forever, including. Okay, we'll get that later. English have to remember or not past okay yeah the English is pretty good I, good I agree that that God have to remember is a good way to solve the problem very good and the header was it the header something I missed something here am I missing the header the header ends with verse seven the last three words of verse seven yeah is the ending of the header what yeah, do those right. three then, words say? The whole is put up perfect. They aim yeah. outside. They yeah. aim universally. They're mm -hmm. not particular. I agree, one hundred percent. Okay. Um, then it was verse seven. Okay, I see. That's it. Okay. Okay. Good. So I think we're pretty good here. Anyway, I have to take. Um, I have to leave in a couple minutes. My wife's going back to Israel today, so I get to go to the airport, and we have another right. week of uh, of school visits this week. How long are you staying in America? Another week, a week and a couple of days. Oh, she wow. was over pretty much. So now it's time to do 
I haven't been, I haven't visited schools in two years since COVID. So now uh -huh. things are finally. All right. So say, bit. say hi to Atarin though, of course. Um, by the way, just very briefly, because you got to go, the Bahag does hold that Hallel is one of the, of the Tariq Mitzvot, although, and the Ramban says on Yontif, it, I was uh, looking up a little. Hallel Mitzvayim or Pesuket de Zimra, or Hallel B'chol Yom of Pesuket de Zimra? No, 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 Hallel only on Yontif, um, you know, this Hallel I'm saying, saying Pesuket de Zimra Hallel. Right, so that, well, that already the Gemara says is Amidat Chasidut. Uh -huh. You know that, uh, but the, the concept that halal is the right that does exist in some of the shonim and the chatam sofer does say it by by Hanukkah, sort of the kavachomer. You know what the gemara says, mimita lachaim. You know by uh, that you have to say say from life, right? The gemara in Megillah. Then why we don't say it on Purim? But so, anyways, that's a total side topic. But uh, the conceptually, that is interesting that there are rishonim who count uh, the saying of halal conceptually as one of the targets. So obviously. The particular verses you say have to be later. Obviously, they were composed much later. But but that's, not, uh, the reason why the rabbis don't count it because it doesn't say anywhere, thou shalt praise God. It just says Avram did it. Got it? Now, for somebody to be mitzvah, they say, I need a Pasuk. Right. So I think it's probably based on the idea. I don't know if it's based on the idea of a Korban Toda or it's yeah, based it could be on. Effective. Get yeah. it from there, something like you know, that. You know, you can find places to link. I obviously I didn't look it up too carefully, but just when you mentioned, I just spent a few minutes. Uh, you know, so we're like, um, like, thematically, we have to have children, but it doesn't say Amisur. It, it says prove root all mankind, which is a blessing. Because I'll mess around with the plastic and say it's only time about Amisro. But then but it, but it says that Abraham was chosen. It says via Dati. God says, I know that he will have. You know. Teach his children. No, he, I can't say. I came to know him so that he would. But, God didn't right. say I know he will do it. God says, I wish he would do it. Ah. <laughs> and and the truth of Prover was probably derived from this week's Parsha based on the Rambam that we're not allowed to count any mitzvot prima tantor. The Rambam in uh, Parsha Mishnayas and Chulin by Gid Hanasha has this idea, which I, I no one has fully answered for me. Where in the world is the uh, prohibition of Gita Nasha appear elsewhere in the Torah? The Rambam makes a big deal about it. That mitzvah can only emanate from Sinai. We can't have any mitzvah before yeah. Sinai. And all the mitzvah have to be is, is, redone. It's not that the Nishma is our Chiyuv of Pru Rul, but now I need a Pasuk. So the rabbis midrashically take the Pasuk from Noah. Right, I, I know. So the Rambam is hard, but based on the Rambam, I think there's supposed to be a source. And I, for, for proof, where you can say, Ishaki Tazriya Vayalda Zachar. Yeah. So um, that's a question. Can Nash, I have no idea where it would be. That, can something thematically be a mitzvah without a pasuk? Can, can I count now? Technically, for something to be a chiyuv the right, I need a pasuk. You follow? But thematically, that's... I can say it's got to be a mitzvah. Now, well, the best example is the Ramban on remember what got to to Miriam. Remember? And what's it? That's a mitzvah to say not to speak lashon hara. The truth of the matter is, it's he says, kedoshim. How can it not be? Yeah, so, it's kedoshim. Kedosh it's Kedoshim to you and Vasita Yasharva Hatov, which so, perhaps yeah. so, are two of the most important Sukim in the Chumash and the Ramban really, you know, how important they are. Yet, none of them are counted as part of the Tariq Mitzvah. They're sort of meta Mitzvah. They're, they're more important than the Mitzvah in many ways. So there's a there. Okay, there are many more Shiram here to discuss this topic. Okay. And uh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, we'll let you go to the airport tomorrow. Rabbi Kowalski, yeah, yeah. Avram Kowalski, it's fascinating, always fascinating tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Serving the feudal lord, and then at one o'clock, Zev Elif will uh, making um, history, making Pesach American. So I think he'll be discussing rabbinic sermons and how they transform part of the elements of the Seder tomorrow. Also fascinating. That's uh, tomorrow, 11 and 1, and then Tuesday, 11 and 1, um, Rachel Danziger on her continuing series on Shemot, which relates to Pesach. And of course, Alex Israel will have his last class on Eliyahu. Um, and then Wednesday, Ari Mermelstein will continue his second part on the series. And I think the topic is, did the wise son own a Haggadah? So that'll be Wednesday, then uh, um, Thursday, Shuli Mishkin, Parsha, Friday, my Parsha on, on the sitter. We'll get to Hodu eventually, please God. And um, we'll you incorporate, see what have a review, new stuff. And anyways, okay, invite a friend. We look forward to learning with you soon. Everybody have a wonderful week. Shavuot Tov, we should hear good news. And uh, okay, be well, and we look forward to learning with you and your friends. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.